I ain't like that. It's more authoritative, right? When you're stacking split wood, always stack it with the bark side up. That way, it gets wet, gets rained on, snowed on, the water runs off of it and not into it. It's also a good idea to cover your firewood um, keep, to keep it dry. Some people build wood sheds. Where I grew up, nobody had a wood shed. Sometimes they would put them in the uh, um, little lean-to on back of their barn or something. Uh, at most, people would put a piece of tin over it or a tarp. Uh, so most people never did. You know, they only cut about a year in advance and. They would burn it before it go bad, but it's a good idea, a tarp, piece of tin, uh, just something to keep it uh, dry. If you want to build a woodshed, build a woodshed. Now when splitting wood, I don't know if you can see this or not, always look, if your wood's dry, sometimes it will naturally crack and um, it, try to split along that crack first. It's telling you where it wants to split. Don't argue with it, just go with it. Um, this piece here is a little soft in the middle. It's a, a hickory, so it should split pretty good. This is about five or six months old. And let's take a swing at her and see what happens. If that was green, I know what would happen. It Very little would happen. But it's been sitting out here, so. Well, buddy, here we go. I not would have went first time, but not held it. So, um, that's good enough right there. Here's another one. See natural crack in it. I don't know if y'all can get picking that up. There we go. Sometimes, well, I missed a crack a little bit, but sometimes if you um, try to go against that crack, you'll, you'll be there all day. That's why you never want to stack wood next to your house. See all them termites? You don't get in that. See that? Never stack wood next to your house. If you're cutting your own firewood, uh, make sure you have extra chains and make sure those chains are sharp. You don't want to be out there with a dull chain. I only have one chain and it's so dull you're fighting with it. You you put a lot of wear on your bar as well as your saw as well as yourself. I always like to have extra chains and I make sure that they are sharp. If you cannot sharpen them yourself, take them to a saw shop or something like that. They're usually, in my area, they're anywhere from $7 to $10 to get sharpened. And I keep them on hand. And when that starts going dull, 
I stop what I'm doing, I change it. Because, man, it's just it's so much, it, it's hard on your chain, it's hard on you, it's hard on your bar, your saw. Just put a sharp chain, things will cut so much better. If you're cutting firewood for yourself, know how long your firewood needs to be. Most manufacturers of fireplaces and wood stoves will tell you that their maximum length 20 inches or 18 inches or 15 inches, whatever it may be. I always cut my wood about an inch to inch and a half shorter than the maximum. Uh, this allows you several things. If you make a mistake and you actually get a little long, you're still okay. Uh, if you cut it the right length, uh, if you're using a uh, wood stove like a Yodel 602, uh, one of the uh, Vogelzang's U.S. stoves, box stoves, um, I think they're 22 inches maximum length. Uh, cut it, cut your wood 20 inches, and you have enough to rake the coals to the front. Put your new wood in the back and then it can burn from the front to the back. You get longer burn times. So that's why I cut mine always a little short. Because uh, sometimes I get in a hurry and I might lay this down to cut it and I look to see where it's at and then I go, oh, oops. Nothing's more frustrating than trying to get a log that's inch or inch and a half too long into your firebox. Um, you'll see in this next clip where I'm measuring my 15 inch wood with my stick. My stove takes a maximum of 16 inches. maximum length is 18 inches I want my wood cut or do you have any wood cut 16 to 17 inches um, some will be honest with you some will lie to you oh, oh yeah we one of the first wood I bought when I moved three moves ago was from a tree service company which I have found in my experience are the worst people to buy wood off of you'll get lengths from 12 inches to 24 inches because those people cutting the trees they don't care or they don't know or they're not instructed to I don't know what it is but every time I bought firewood off a tree service company and I tell them my maximum length is 18 inches I don't want nothing oh, 18 inches okay okay yeah yeah we, we've got to deliver it like did y'all even listen so um, measure you would if you're buying it tell them you know I want 16 17 inch wood or, or you know whatever if you can burn 22 inch wood then you know maybe ask for 20 or 21 inch so uh, keep that in mind uh, especially if you're a new uh, fireplace or a wood stove heating off-grid homesteader if you're buying your firewood you always want to burn seasoned wood if you can, unless you're buying it for next year. Um, ask the people you're buying it off of, how long has that wood been cut? Processors, firewood cutters, sometimes they have their own version of seasoned. Um, I've had some tell me that it's been cut three months and that's seasoned. It's still green at three months. Uh, the way a lot of times you can tell look how I don't know if you can see this picking it up on the camera or not But this wood 
how it's been cut. This has only been cut about two weeks. How bright and shiny it is compared to, say, this wood that's been cut since uh, about six months ago. The least I would consider wood season is nine months. I prefer a year, okay? So if they're telling you it's been, oh, it's six months, it's seasoned, they're stretching the truth. There's very few wood that will season in six months. Uh, down in my area, oak, hickory, elm, one year. I, I would probably accept nine months if I really needed firewood and I was sure they were telling me the truth. But other than that, you can see all these bright spices. This is green wood and this is your season wood. either cut or buy your firewood a year in advance if you're cutting green wood or you're, you're you go buy wood and it's nothing but green and even, even if you don't need it it's a good idea to buy it or cut it and put it out there so it can season a year so you know how long that wood has been seasoned um, right now i'm cutting green wood uh, this is next year's firewood. I'm, I work a you know year ahead, and if I cut these two big trees behind me, I'll be two years ahead. And if you want to buy your firewood, that's fine. Green wood is typically cheaper than seasoned wood, so buy you as much green wood now for next year, or you'll know, get close. So uh, that'll save you some money, and that will assure you that you know that you, the wood you're burning next year is seasoned. If you're cutting your own firewood in your area and you're not sure what type of trees you're cutting, you, you better learn quick because you can cut some trees that are just crap for firewood. I'm thinking elm, um, sweet gum, stuff like that. Uh, also, when you're looking at a tree to cut size it up uh, make sure one thing it's not too big for your saw because if you take that little saw i was just working on and try to cut this tr big oak right here you may do it but you're going to put a lot of wear and tear on that saw a lot of wear and tear on you and it's just it's better to make sure you size your saw for the wood you're cutting now look at the grain on this tree it's straight even though it bends up here it's still straight grain and this oak sometimes can have a reputation for being hard to split i think that reputation comes because some of these oaks twist as they grow up this is a straight grain tree this will split pretty good let me show you one that is a little twisted right here is an oak that twists as it grows you can see it's almost i hope you can get this it's almost like a corkscrew as it goes up this tree will be a pain in the butt to split by hand uh, if you've got a hydraulic log splitter not so much probably but always take a look at that make it easy on yourself i don't know if you can see that but it's just almost like a screw as that grain that bark twist it means your grains twisted and now this one would be a pain in the butt so just kind of look your wood over uh, this is a tree I'd leave unless I really needed firewood never ever stack your wood directly on the ground it will promote rot and that rot will just keep working its way up into your wood stack and I've seen wood that's been stacked directly on the ground for two years lose probably 25% of their wood because it just kept, um, moisture kept wicking up and just kept rotting out their wood. Um, here over here, I don't know if you can see that, I've used concrete blocks. I had them, had extra, got it up off the ground. Here. I just took some saplings I cut, laid them on the ground, stacked my wood up on there. You can use pallets, you can use scrap lumber, treated wood, 
just about anything to get your wood just a little bit off the ground, you know. So you'll be surprised how much better your firewood will be if it's not uh, stacked directly on the ground. 